So what what do I call you, Governator? So you can call me anything you want. Okay. Call me Schwatzi, Governor. Okay. You, you, you call him. Okay. So let's talk about at the movies. We are doing this series at the movies. So after Pastor Rick and the team lead us in worship. Hey, my name is Danny DeVito. Oh, no, no, no. Anyways, we look at a movie and we see where the Bible intersects with that movie. We ask the question of the movie, does this movie um, take us closer to Jesus? I get really inspired by his story. The story of, of Jesus is very inspiring. He, he brings new life. He, he uh, heals our brokenness and forgives us of our sins, yes. I've always had great failures. If it's in the movie business, if it's in bodybuilding, I have my losses financially and also in, in, in my personal life. And so I share that, I share the whole me rather than leaving that out. Now I'm trying to slowly try to rebuild it. Your mom was concerned about the direction of your life? Very concerned about that. Look, it's painful when it happens. Yeah. And to rebuild with Jesus' wisdom and his guidance. And well, that's what At The Movies is all about, following Jesus in a world of Terminators. <laughs> so what do you think Jesus would say to you? I'll be back and go to you. <laughs> Thank you. So it's true, it's an honor. Church. It's been so good already and I can't wait to hear the message. Um, so good to come together after a busy week and um, to encourage one another. Um, we all really need that encouragement living in a, a world like we live in. Uh, so important to yeah, just build each other up and um, yeah, I hope you can meet someone new today and encourage them. Um, if you'd like to just take out your connection card, um, it's just in the front of the seat pocket in front of you. Um, if you're new today, uh, we'd love to connect with you after the service out um, in the toddler of the coffee. Um, but this is also another way to connect with you if you'd like to just fill in your name and your details. Um, if you're a regular, you can just fill in your name and um, any change of details that you might have. Um, then below that we've got a prayer request and praise note area. Um, we'd love to pray for you if you're struggling somewhere. So um, just please know that the pastoral care team here will be praying over these each week. Um, and we'd also love to hear any answer prayer or anything that um, God yeah, has done that we can rejoice with you about. Um, then underneath that we've got next steps or um, serving areas. Um, so if you'd like to get involved in one of the teams, that'd be awesome. I know... Um, joining up to the music team many years ago really helped me to have some consistency and just to build some relationships and um, also to have fun doing it and serving God. So um, I'll just give you a minute to fill out that while I um, fill in mine. Hold on to those, you can put them into the buckets with the tithe and offering. Um, we're just going to welcome up Norico to um, encourage us in our giving. Good morning. As we prepare for our giving this morning, as you saw in the church news, we have opportunity this morning to give into our building funds and also our tithes and offering or weekly ones. Um, so I'd just like to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 13 to 15. So he that Paul's writing to the church of Corinth and saying, If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. What Paul's saying here is, 
Most likely, people thought that Paul was going mad. He's going out of his mind. You know, because he was proclaiming a gospel, pure gospel, not just the same with his words, but he was living the gospel in his life. So the people who know him formally, or, or even the people who have yet to knew the God back then, would have saw him doing that and say, are you out of mind? Well, what do you do that? It's mad. So I thought about that this morning. What is a compel? What, what does it mean when he said, Christ's love compels me? You know, Paul was saying everything he did, he was so compelled by the love of Jesus, that Jesus died on the cross for him. And that greatly influenced him in everything Paul did throughout his life. The rest of his life, he was influenced by the love of the Christ. His action was motivated by the love of Jesus that was shown up on the cross. Now, I looked into the word compelled, and in some translation it also said to control. You know, it's, it's a funny word because when we think of control, it's someone controlling us to make us do something we don't want to do it. But the original word in the Greek is actually not meaning a pressure to make us do something. We often think about it when someone gets up and talks about giving. I'm not here to pressure you to make you do what you want to do or you don't want to do. But here in the word compel actually means motivation. You know, what motivates us? If we are motivated by the love of the Christ, we do everything out of that motivation of the love of the Christ. So this morning, the goal's encouragement to me as I was preparing, but also my encouragement to us all is may our giving and offering is motivated by the love of the Christ that has been shown to us on the cross already. You know, we just heard a few words today in the song, fear and love don't go together. When we are motivated by fear, I would probably think, oh, I'm not going to have enough money because I'm fearing for not having enough if I give to the kingdom of God. You know, that's not being motivated by Christ's love. Jesus' love showed us. He gave it all on the cross. And that is my example, not for his own benefit, but benefit for us. That's why we're sitting here today. So I just want to think about that and leave that with you. Uh, Galatians 2.20 also said that Jesus loved us and gave himself for us all. He didn't give us part of him, but he gave all. So may our hearts be deeply influenced and compelled by the love of Christ this morning as we prepare our givings. So tithes and offering, we have three ways to give. You can use the envelopes that's in front of you. You can use online like our families do. Or you can also use the FBOS at the info desk after the service. What are we doing this today? I thought about it. I've been here uh, in a church for 12 and a half years, and I was thinking about it. Before I even got saved, before even I came to know the Lord, over 24 years ago, someone in this church, or back then, was compelled by the Christ love and contributed to the building fund, contributed to the future of someone they didn't even know, they haven't met. Not for their own benefits, but benefit of us. That's why we're benefiting from it, because someone was compelled by the love of Christ and gave it to the church. And that's what I just want to leave it with all of us this morning. As we're hearing our children, you know, um, worshipping the Lord in the kids' church, that's what I see when I bring a building fund to me. You know? In 10 years' time, that 8 years old will be in his church, could be leading, could be preaching, could be leading a worship. You know, that's what we're investing into it. We'll be a people from a community who are yet to know the Christ as of today, might be in a church finding a hope through Jesus. And that's what we're giving into it. It's not about the building, it's about the people, because Jesus died for all. So let us pray together this morning. May our giving will be multiplied to display his love for our community. So Lord Jesus, I just thank you this morning for your love, your great love. Lord, that you gave yourself for us all, Lord Jesus. So God, as we prepare our giving, as we bring our tithes and offering, building fund into your storehouse, Lord Jesus. God, we just pray that you multiply this and use it for more multiplication of your love and your love in action through our community, through your house in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And your bucket will come from left to right and just put your envelopes with uh, your connection card. Let's stand and worship. And I'll be
you with starting something brand new today. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you, Ben. Hey Trash, how are we going? Uh, I'm really excited today. As you can see up on the slides, uh, we're starting a new youth-based program on Sunday mornings. And it's called Zeal. It's a youth devotional program we're going to be running with high school age kids. So that's grade 7 to grade 12. And really our heart and the heart of the church and the culture here is to just foster Christians, foster believers. And we're really targeting that youth age bracket. And we're hoping that through this group, we're going to be able to speak life into these kids. We're going to be able to spend more time fostering them in the knowledge of the Bible. And also, the most important thing for me is to see them foster relationships with each other. Because the thing is, church, and I don't want to scare you, but once you leave school, the things that are tying you to church, like mom and dad, they're not going to exist anymore. You get to make your own decisions. You get to choose where you want to go. And half of the time, it's not mom and dad that are going to keep you in church. It's your best mate that's there every day with you that you can hang out with, who shares the same beliefs. And those people that are there beside you, they're going to be that rock in your life that's going to help you stay true to your good character and your Christian beliefs. And that's what we want to see here in Zeal. We want to see that foster relationship. It's happening today, right now. And it happens before the messages. Uh, so we, I encourage you, if you're a, a parent of a youth age kid, please send them out to us. We're going to have some fun. So we go out right now. Right now. See you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Fantastic. Can I join you? No. Christian, come on up. Christian's going to bring the word this morning. And give him some encouragement. Fantastic. A bunch of spiritual zealots heading out there. Well, we are continuing our At The Movies <laughs> message series. And, and one of you that was very excited about this. I'm not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> okay. uh, have you got your outline? If you don't have your outline, please raise your hands nice and high. And our ushers will give you one. Pens should be on your seat or in your front seat pocket. So you'll need this outline to follow through. So, really love the, the interview between Pastor Paul and Arnie. <laughs> that Jesus we back, yeah. So the whole reason we're doing this at the movie series is because we recognize elements of biblical truth already present in films. We're not saying that all films are biblically exactly correct. But because human beings are made in God's image, and every human being has a certain longing for eternity, they might not fully understand it, but we have been wired for eternity, that intricate longing expresses itself in the arts, in literature, and movies. And it's to that we can speak. It's like the Apostle Paul when he visited the Athenians. They weren't believers, but he made them know the God they didn't know. He even quoted one of their own poets. The, the whole phrase, in him we live and move and have our being. Paul did it. And um, we need to be wise as serpents. Passionless, but wise as serpents. And look at our culture around and say, where can I take something and point people to Jesus? And this is exciting. This really excites me. And so today we'll look at the epic space opera film titled Rogue One. A Star Wars story. I did. <laughs> uh, thank you for the encouragement. All right. So, for those of you who are not Wayne Quilliam, all right, a bit of background. Rogue One takes place in a galaxy far, far away. Preach it, brother. Now, <laughs> many of us might have heard of this thing called the Force. Okay. And uh, what is the Force? I, I don't have a Yoda. 